The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line.
The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to all. With the permission of esteemed guests, I begin today's proceedings. On behalf of Central Council for Research in Yunani Medicine, I extend a wholehearted welcome to all the participants to the webinar series on COVID-19 pandemic experiences and lessons learned being organized by CCRU Ministry of Ayush from 15 to 21st December 2021. Uh, very warm welcome to our dignitaries, Honorable Vice Chancellor Jamia Hamdan, Professor Dr. Afshar Alam sir, respected Professor Asim Ali Khan sir, Director General, CCRU and Advisor, Yunani Ministry of Ayush, respected Padma Shri Dr. M. A. Wahid Sahib, former Director, NRI University, Hyderabad, moderator of today's event, and our eminent speakers, respected Dr. R.K. Manchanda, Director, Department of Ayush, Government of NCT of Delhi, and respected Dr. Jibul Kishore, Director, Professor, and Head, Department of Community Medicine, Sadhajang Hospital. Friends, we all know that Ministry of Ayush, Government of India, has taken noteworthy steps in combating the difficult time of COVID-19 pandemic. 
Today's webinar series organized by CCRM is also an extension of IEC activities of Ministry of Ayush to create awareness and provide scientific platforms for deliberation on various aspects of COVID-19 pandemic. And yes, we have learned various lessons and have experiences to share. Therefore, to capture those insights, we have a team of learned experts who will address us during the five webinars of this series. Council has done noteworthy work in providing uh, solutions to the public health uh, problems in terms of clinical research, researches in other areas, and providing general medical. And we have brought out uh, uh, many uh, publications and journals of, uh, in the international and international repute. So moving forward with the program, we have amongst us a person of strong will and determination, a leader with an excellent oratory skill, Professor Asim Ali Khan, sir. He is the Director General of Central Council for Research in Yunani Medicine, uh, a leading institution of scientific research in various fundamental and applied aspects of Yunani medicine in the country. He is holding the charge as advisor Yunani in Ministry of Ayush and is also the member of Board of Governors, National Commission of Indian Medicine, Government of India. Sir is directing and coordinating various research and academic activities of CCRUM and collaborative research programs with leading academic as well as scientific institutions of the national and international importance through its 22 peripheral institutes spread across India. He is also involved and responsible for planning, implementation and governance of quality education, training and researches in Ayush system through all Ayush universities, All India Institute, national institutes, research institutes, <coughs> government and public policy. He has brought out many publications in Journal of Repute. He is a member on various important committees of Government of India. I take this opportunity to say that Sir has provided a new direction to CCRUM and is taking it to greater heights. So I invite Sir for his welcome address. Thank you so much, Dr. Gazala, for this introduction. A very good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum and namaskar to all uh, the dignitaries who have joined us today and all the participants. Respected uh, Professor Dr. Afshar Alam Sahib, the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Jamia Hamdard, New Delhi. Dr. R.K. Manchanda Sahib, the Director, Department of Irish Government of NCT Delhi. Professor Jugal Kishore Sahib, Director, Professor and Head, Department of Community Medicine, Vagban Mahavir Medical College in Sadarjang Hospital, New Delhi. Our colleague Padmashri, Dr. M.A. Vahid Sahib, the former director, National Research Institution of Dinani Medicine for Skin Disorders in Hyderabad. All participating registered delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to this webinar series on COVID-19 pandemic. Experiences and lessons learned being organized by CCRUM. Ministry of Ayush from 15 to 21st December 2021, which we are organizing. At the outset, I would like to extend my very sincere thanks to Professor Akshar Alam Sahib, the Honorable Vice Chancellor Jamia Hamdard, New Delhi, a leading university in our country, who is the chief guest for today's event. He has wholeheartedly accepted our invitation to grace today's occasion. He was also present with us very recently in one of our national research institutions for skin disorders in Hyderabad for a national seminar in intellectual property rights. Extremely thankful to you, sir, for sparing time and blessing the scholars and researchers of Yunani medicine not only in CCRUM, but within the country. I know that your good self is leading a very prestigious institutions in the University of Jamia Hamdir in the name of the Yunani Institute. Learned faculties are there and under your leadership, a lot of activities are happening there and many are in the pipeline. Friends, our country is privileged being home 
to the time-tested indigenous medical systems. Ministry of Ayush has a mandate to indigenous medical systems. And that mandate is including Yunani medicine through its research councils and national institutions. Over the years, the CCRUM has emerged as the leading government organization for scientific researches in Yunani medicine. Council has achieved significant leads in vitiligo, hepatitis, sinusitis, bronchial asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, eczema, psoriasis, urinal ulcer, filariasis, etc. And based on the outcome of research conducted by Council, recently we have achieved 17 patents also. They have been granted by the Indian Patent Office. And furthermore, seven patent applications are under consideration at the IPO. CCRUM has taken initiative for accreditation of its institutions also by the National Accreditation Board for Hospitals and Healthcare Providers, we call it NABH. Our Hyderabad institution, where uh, the Honorable Vice Chancellor recently visited, has already been awarded this NABH accreditation, and other institutions are in the process of getting accreditation very soon. We have a GMP certified drug manufacturing unit at Hyderabad. And another one is coming up at Regional Research Institution of Iranian Medicine at Chennai. In a move to strengthen research facilities at institutions, the Council has upgraded laboratories of NRIMSD in Hyderabad and Regional Research Institute of Iranian Medicine in Srinagar, Chennai, and Aligarh, with state of the art facilities, modern technology, and renewed structure. Under drug standardization program, CCRDM has developed pharmacopoeia standards for almost 298 single drugs and around 200 compound formulations. We have also established certain co-location centers in different tertiary care conventional medicine hospitals in Delhi. And in a similar pattern, we have also developed the intra-Ayush inter -Ayush linkages. They have also been developed very effectively. And our two centers, one in Onishru of Ayurveda and one in the President State Rashtrapati Bhavan, we are working on these two models. Under one roof, we have established all these five centers. In Safdarjang Hospital also, this model is working. When all uh, the sciences like Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha, and Homeopathy, they are one yoga, are working under one roof, along with the allopathic tertiary care hospital. We have also established linkages with academic and scientific institutions of repute in the country, and many institutions, like including Jamia Hamdar, All Institute of Medical Sciences, NIPERS, and Mumbai University, many other institutions, CSIR, ICMR institutions, we have developed linkages with those institutions for collaborative researches. At international level also, there has been a fruitful dialogue with countries like South Africa, Iran, China, USA, UK, Israel, Greece, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Tajikistan, and few more countries. CCRUM, under the guidance of Ministry of Ayush, has played an active role during the COVID-19 pandemic by undertaking various activities and measures to check the spread of pandemic by creating awareness, advertising, preventive measures, and providing prophylactic drugs. CCRUM has brought out advisories for immunity-boosting measures during the pandemic. As per Unani classical wisdom, Improving immunity with immune boosters is one of the key approaches for prevention of diseases and maintenance of health. Therefore, a strategy to enhance immunity and provide symptomatic relief in upper respiratory tract infections is advocated in these guidelines for qualified Unani medical practitioners. CCRM has also conducted prophylaxis studies in collaboration with modern counterparts in clinical trials with Unani drugs as an add-on therapy. The efficacy of four Unani formulations against SARS-CoV-19 virus was also established through in silico studies. And the multifaceted approach of Unani interventions significantly contributed in improving the immunity in difficult times of the COVID-19 pandemic. On the same line, CCRM is organizing webinar series on COVID-19 pandemic, experiences and lessons learned with the support of Ministry of Ayush. The series will have five webinars on the topics, which include lessons learned during COVID-19 pandemic, role of nutrition in maintaining health, management of COVID-19 cases, experience sharing, taking care of mental health during and after COVID-19, and post-COVID complications and care. 
In each webinar, one lecture each on modern perspective and Iranian perspective of the pandemic will be delivered by experts. And those experts have been identified from the very reputed institutions, for example, Vardhaman Mahavir Medical College in Sardarjung Hospital in Delhi, Professor Bas Karachara College of Applied Sciences, Department of Food Technology, Delhi University, AK Tibia College, Aligarh Muslim University, the School of Unani Medical Education Research, Jami Hamdard, National Institute of Unani Medicine in Bangalore, Lady Harding Medical College, New Delhi, ANU Tibia College, and Ames Rishikesh. And with this, I welcome all the speakers and thank all the speakers from this platform that they found a time to join us and the guide the fraternity of Unani medicine and the I systems of medicine along with others. Thank you very much. Today, we are starting with the first webinar in this series. And the theme for this webinar is lessons learned during COVID-19 pandemic. I welcome the today's speakers, Dr. R.K. Banchanda Sahib, our colleague, He's the director, Department of Irish Government of NCT of Delhi. Professor Jugal Kishore Sahib, he's the director, professor and head, Department of Community Medicine, Vardhaman Mahavir Medical College in Southern Jang Hospital, New Delhi. And moderator of the session today is our colleague, Professor Dr. M. A. Wahid Sahib. He's the Padma Shri M. A. Wahid Sahib. He's former director, National Research Institute of United Medicine for Skin Disorders in Hyderabad. I must also mention the name of Dr. Ghazala Javed here and her team. They have been doing untired, I mean, tireless work for this, this to organize this particular, this particular webinar, and not only this, many other webinars and such kind of activities. She and her team are always uh, managing and coordinating and organizing. So I would like to name Dr. Farha Ahmed along with her, the consultant IT, Shri Arvind Kumar, and the consultant social media of CCRM, that is. Uh, Mr. Sham Sahib for coordinating this webinar series and all such events which we time and again we keep on doing in CCRUM. I'll not take much time. I know the time is precious and there is a limited time for every one of us. So not taking much time. Uh, I will try to I, I try to conclude this now. I'm sure and I'm confident that the participants who have joined us from different parts of the country will be benefited from this webinar series and will be benefited by the expert understanding of our experts uh, who will be speaking uh, after some time to you and will be addressing to you on this particular issue. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Ghazala ma'am, your mic is mute. Dr. Ghazala, ma'am, please unmute your mic. Call Asim Saab for Asim Saab to phone me. One day we have a meeting at noon. We need to bond up, bond up. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, you may carry on. Okay, okay. Sorry for this uh, technical glitch. So, uh, we have among us Honorable Vice Chancellor Professor Mohammad Afshar Alam, sir. Sir completed his post graduation in. Master of Computer Application from the Aligarh Muslim University. 
and PhD from Jamia Millia Islamia. Presently, sir is working as Vice Chancellor and Professor and Dean of School of Engineering Sciences and Technology at Jamia Hamdard, New Delhi. His research areas include software reengineering, data mining, bioinformatics, fuzzy databases, and sustainable development. In his 25 years of experience in teaching and research, he has invited to many countries uh, across the globe for delivering special lectures and as keynote speaker in conferences. Sir has authored 10 books, supervised more than 30 doctoral students and more than 200 postgraduate research projects, has more than 160 research papers in reputed journals to his credit. He is confirmed with many prestigious awards. He is also the member of various governmental bodies at both national and international level, including University Grant Commission, all India Council of Technical Education, National Assessment and Accreditation Council, Department of Science and Technology, to name a few. I once again extend my heartfelt thanks to Honorable VC Sir for gracing the occasion as Chief Guest of today's webinar series and invite him for his inaugural address. Please, Sir. Thank you, Ghazal. Uh, Professor Asim Ali Khan, sir, Director General CCRU, Advisor, Unani Ministry of IUS. Dr. R.K. Manchanda, Director, Department of IIS, Government of NCT Delhi. Dr. Jugal Kishore Sahab, Director, Professor, Head, De Department of Community Medicine, Vardhwan Mahabir Medical College in Sardarjan Hospital, New Delhi. And Padam Shri, Dr. M.A. Vahid, former Director, NRI, NRIUM, ST, Hyderabad, all participants, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Gives my immense pleasure to inaugurate today's webinar series on COVID-19 pandemic experience and lesson learned, which is being organized by CCRUM Ministry of IUS from 15 to 21st December 2021. Friends, we have all been witness to the major health crisis in the form of COVID-19 pandemic. COVID-19 has brought in new challenges before the healthcare system. We had seen how the healthcare system all over the world were stretched on their limits. Strengthening the immunity of the person was a key factor in prevention and treatment of COVID-19. This is in fact one of the strength area of IU system. Ever since the coronavirus pandemic began, the major emphasis has been laid to on immune enhancement modalities the current pandemic had provided an opportunity to the IUS practitioner to contribute in sharing the strength on the existing healthcare system. Being a leading national organization engaged in research related activities, CCRUM has taken this step in the right direction where I have been told that experts from premium institutes and students and scholars from various academic institutes are participating through a virtual mode. I congratulate Professor Asim Ali Khan Saab, the advisor, Unani Ministry of IUS and Director General CCRUM on his and his team for taking this initiative. Friends, we all aware that the Unani medicine is a comprehensive medical system, which is meticulously deal with the various state of health and disease. I am happy to note that it is flourishing so well in India and has developed scientifically over a year and today the country has adequately growing infrastructure for academic research and healthcare in any system of medicine. It is heartening to know that the Central Council of Research in Unani Medicine, which is an apex body for research in Unani Medicine, is carrying out many research activities and had taken a great stride in this field. CCRM has keen acumen of multifaceted aspect of research and encourage such research in the field of preclinical and clinical drug literary survey and cultivation and fundamental research among other research activities. The Council has carried out various research program with an emphasis on prevent, pre preserving the basic Unani principle while correlating them with the modern research strategies and parameters. The research the research is aimed at developing new drugs as well as validating traditional Unani therapies and drugs by adopting appropriate modern research methodology and technology. It is good to know that the CCRUM venture into a collaborative project and also invite projects from the researcher 
of a various institute based on their interest and expertise with the view of build, cap, uh, build capacity and increase research involvement. The Council have been working continuously to bring out the essential drug to treat various diseases. It gives my immense pleasure to inform that Jamia Ahmedad has signed an agreement with CCRUM and we, all be, uh, we will be happy to take forward this agreement in more fruitful manner. Recently, I have also visited the Premium Institute of Cesarium at Hyderabad, that is National Research Institute of Unani Medicine for Skin Disorder, engage in multifaceted research and academic activities and providing healthcare services to masses. I must say that it is an excellent facility with a good infrastructure. A national seminar on IPR was organized where the young researcher benefited from the deliberations. I am happy to note that the webinar series on COVID-19 pandemic experience and lessons learned with will have five webinars on the related topic where Yunani and the modern perspective will be discussed in detail by the experts from reputed institutes like Vardhuman Mahabir Medical College and Safdarjan Hospital, New Delhi, Prof uh, Professor Vaksicharya College of Applied Science, Department of Food Technology, Delhi University, AK Tibya College, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh, School of Unani Med, uh, Medical Education and Research, Jamia Ahmedad, National Institute of Unani Medicine, Bangalore, Lady Harding Medical College, New Delhi, Ayurvedic and Tibbi, uh, Tibbi, Unani Tibbi College, New Delhi, and Ames Rishi Case. I congratulate Professor Asim Ali Khan on his team for putting together as a well structured program. I am confident that this webinar series will be an opportunity for constructive and fruitful exchange of experience and thought process. And I hope practical and inventive approach may be adopted for a future strategies in this regard. With these words, I wish you all success for today's program. Thank you and Jai Hind. Thank you, sir, for your words of wisdom. Hope I am audible now. Yes, yes you are. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now we have amongst us esteemed experts to enlighten us. First, I will introduce the moderator of the session, Dr. M. A. Vahid Sahib, Padma Shri Awadi in the year 2017. Uh, he is a leading researcher and a specialist in Yunani system of medicine. Dr. Vahid has served as head of the erstwhile CRIM Hyderabad under the influence of CCRUM, Ministry of Ayush, and he is member of various task force committees of CCRUM. Dr. Vahid sir is widely recognized across the continent for his outstanding contribution for the treatment of vitiligo. He has developed about 17 Yunani formulations for the effective management of vitiligo. Dr. Vahid Sahab has expertise in design and conduct of phase 2 and phase 3 clinical trials in Yunani medicine and he has coordinated many multi-centric clinical trials. Uh, Dr. Vaisab has published 27 research papers in national and international journals and presented more than 60 papers in national and international conferences. He has yeah. given, delivered more than 134 lectures on various scientific platforms. He guided graduate and postgraduate students from di different disciplines of Yunani, pharmacy, biochemistry and genetics. He has widely traveled to promote Yunani system of medicine globally. Dr. Vaisab is the recipient of numerous awards and honors. He has been conferred many outstanding awards. We welcome you, sir, to moderate the session. Before handing over to you, let me introduce our first speaker, Dr. Jugal Kishore, sir. He is the director, professor, and head of the department, Community Medicine, Vardhman Mahavir Medical College and Safdarjan Hospital, New Delhi. He is a medical educator and public health expert. Did his secondary school education from Jamia Millia Islamia. His more than 290 research papers are published in journals, in magazines, and dailies. He has authored 34 books and many chapters and pamphlets on public health, national programs, social reform, and rationality. He is a member of many expert groups of health planning and implementation of programs of the central and state government and various institutions. He has conducted more than 75 national and international training programs, workshops, symposium conferences, and delivered hundreds of guest lectures. Member of many task forces of ICMR, Ministry of Health, recruitment boards and curriculum, and study board of universities and colleges. 
He teaches BSc, MSc nursing students, MBBS, MD, and PhD students on epidemiology, research methods, health system, mental health, and other topics of public health. His mission mm. is to liberate the humans through education and development of public health. So it's an honor to have you among us, and uh, I'll request you to kindly uh, present uh, your talk, and I'll request the participants to kindly post queries, suggestions, if any, in the chat box, which will be addressed by us. Over to you, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Dr. Jugal Kishore, sir, we cannot hear you. Kindly unmute yourself. Kindly unmute yourself. I'm saying uh, Namaskar, everybody. Uh, Namaskar. Can, I share, Namaskar. can I share my slides? Yes, sir. From where? Uh, sir, you have to. This is a new platform. So, uh, yeah. a little interesting. So our team is helping, sir. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, from how to share. What? This email, I think email is open. No, no, email I have sent. I have just. We can okay. see, we can see your. Screen now. Where uh, okay. we can see email is open on your screen. Now you can see. Yes, yes sir. So you can okay, kindly okay. make it full. Yes, full screen, I sir. You can full. make it full. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for giving this opportunity. And and uh, yesterday only we were in some integrated uh, conference on health uh, in the Constitution Club. And we were discussing about the same topic of uh, what experience we have gained. So I'm uh, sharing with you all uh, with uh, humility and uh, respect and honor. Uh, our DG is there, our Vice Chancellor of uh, Jamia Amdar is there, our Manchanda is there, old friends. So uh, Gajala, thank you uh, giving this opportunity. Uh, you all know about this COVID. And COVID has given uh, one more chance to relook at our own life and uh, life on Earth. Rather, there should be more, uh, you know, thinking about beyond just uh, disease. But we have to think about the life. And uh, all, all of you know that uh, this disease was originated from Wuhan city of uh, China. And uh, there are controversies whether it is created virus or it's a natural virus just happened because of interaction between wild animal and human being, which we have witnessed uh, in H1N1 also. I have seen uh, H1N1 and, and part of that uh, uh, pandemic that time. And then this time, this is much bigger. And this this pandemic is maybe i think because of uh, we have created many new terms new area of concern and could be i think infodemic could be the reason of uh, making this disease as as bigger as you know i think uh, any any uh, pandemic we have witnessed in history of mankind so uh, these are uh, comprehensive preventive health and control strategies and I have enumerated as 12. One by one, we can discuss. But in short, I just want to say that uh, in January, you know, when things have started uh, nearby, we have sent uh, our doctors to, you know, uh, Japan, and then, you know, in on the ship, you know, many of our Indians were there, so it has to be escorted to India, and then in February, you know some cases were reported three cases were reported in uh our Kerala, and they they were uh, managed very well because the system was very good then uh, uh we have uh, you know immediately the government was so actively uh you know doing the control work 
uh, and uh, this very old epidemic disease act was enacted and activated and then uh, many of the state has also activated public health act, disaster management act which was also activated and amended so these all act give the power to government to do certain things and immediately able to you know control because of the international laws are there of the disease so international ban was uh, witnessed by many of us and uh, because the disease has to come to any country through uh, the routes maybe the air or water or maybe land so these all route has to be cut down but uh, you know we found that that's only just a strategy where we can decrease the you know infectious disease like pandemic and the disease was already there uh, through various methods uh, which we learn uh, you know there are many our borders are not uh, you know they are always uh, allow people and they are porous in many of the areas so the uh, the action started like as a outbreak investigation and then surveillance is started con contact tracing all these terms uh, has been used we we study all these things in epidemiology so as an epidemiologist you know we were started this all activity just because of epidemic disease act and public health act and then risk communication was widespread and immediately the you know the government activated uh, machinery for uh, uh, you know controlling things so that risk communication somewhere you know i i, I feel uh, was not managed properly and then lead to infodemics because of our social media and other media so they were engaged in other activities and then disease continued to uh, you know create problem and then leading to uh, such kind of uh, you know problem which is mainly of the communication problem uh, then we found that community involvement is very very important and we'll discuss about how in some area it, it was there and in many of the places it was not there and comparison was uh, done and it is through uh, our who you know actively involved in comparing the various rates and then figures you know every every day we used to get this in, information that is going to tell where uh, what is happening and and the what is strategy they are adopting so we were able to see all these things then we learn about this isolation quarantine and then you know hue and cry or in the community just because you know people were sent away from the family and then hospital or maybe some other place and the doctors were staying somewhere else you know or maybe other health workers and then try system in the community first time you must have seen that you know they were labeled as you know yellow zone and a green zone and these all things so it's a very interesting uh, because the tries uh, off site or on site is there usually done in you know disaster and also the military one thing i have learned that you know uh, if the quality of care is not there and in quality of care whether it is a modern system of medicine or any other system you know we require a good quality of care and uh, wherever it is not good then lead to so much suffering and so much deaths and which was there in second wave which you can see that uh, the quality was not good and the number of facilities uh, lack, lacking and i'll show you all these things that how we have uh, faced these all things and come out uh, with many things and i just want to mention here as dg sahab has already spoken about this you know integration of the yunani medicine and and, and modern system of medicine uh, because we used to have this Ayush as a part of the health ministry. Now, <clears throat> a separate ministry is going to give more impetus or more, you know, power to grow. And uh, in isolation, it should not grow because patient is coming, uh, you know, to seek the help. And if we cannot deliver good quality health, then I think uh, we may miss the chance of, you know, seeing that which uh you know integrated form of medicine is going to help we all learned that you know some kind of integration is required 
and it's not me i think long time back we have the second health policy where uh, it is stated that mainstreaming of you know alternative system of medicine for ayush required and therefore you know uh, more uh, budgeting is done and later on the second policy third policy came national policy then again in that you know uh, emphasis was given on integration or mainstreaming then we all already seen about this infection control and biomedical ways handling of dead bodies was the issue during this period and how it has to be handled you must have seen you know there was some problem but it could be you know bring to a best level then uh, the issue of mental health counseling and stress <coughs> dealing with this stigma and then vaccination so these are all strategy uh, which has been uh, throughout our pandemic now uh, i'll just want to share i went to ladakh in march you know just before even lockdown and we were there there was some news that you know it is going to many people will come to kashmir and then you know it will go to our kargil area and there, there is possibility that infection may spread to many other areas so i have seen that how the airport you know there was some confusion and we streamlined the airport i see material in english hindi and local language you know ladakhi language and then uh, there was uh, no system of collection of sample from there because the lab was not there in ladakh and it has to be shifted to delhi or maybe chandigarh so that time you know i can see that you know we had no resources no a facility no system on place and within few months uh, we had this first wave and leading to so much to and cry the ventilator was big issue during this period school were closed down and the first time school was closed down in in ladakh before even our main school in in uh, in whole india and then hotels were open we were there in one hotel and then we started that how uh, the hotel should have the guidelines in place and then uh, you know community involvement so in community involvement and the fear of the public how we have dealt with the first time this whole village uh, was you know cordon and uh, you know some kind of uh, blockages were done in the main street this was done first you know in india then we have a meeting with the uh, very high officials and discuss the issue and then you know we went to one village and then discuss their issues and a lot of things learned <clears throat> i have very great experience that community involvement is so important they were you know when we discuss when the high official were there and discuss then things changed totally uh, the apprehension goes down so that kind of interaction <clears throat> is required in all kinds of public health measures and then this was published later on as effective public health measures assist ladakh in containment of covid then on 24th onward we have this lockdown and then unlock down started in june so in april we have you know first wave and uh, many deaths occur many cases started then from the first wave itself we were come to know that actually covid is going to stay we have to learn more about the known and unknown things in future we were not knowing many things but it appeared that you know it will go down the the covid will go down but there were many uh, school of thoughts and i start believing in this virus is created because of this reason that in the next wave it was more aggressive and then various variant were available each variant was more infectious you know so that is the gain of function you know which was banned in uh, world over this gain of function of uh, playing the virus for their inability to infect so uh, anyway this is again a controversial issue whether but uh, just want to say that we should never play with any animal or any you know organism for anything you know whatever natural way we can uh, control them able to prevent it is much better way rather than you know uh, in manipulating them 
for gain or whatever you know is going to have the setback and that is that is why i'm saying you know uh, we were not knowing many things during this period and uh, we were not knowing that whether this immunity which we have gathered from the infection is going to be there there was no vaccine there was no drug you know then uh, we have the unlock down process started and and we went to different district we first went to as a multi uh, ministerial team and went to indore and when the whole area was you know contained and maybe i think closed down then we were there on the street and you know telling people how to deal with so we have seen so many uh, up and downs of you know things then we have second wave and you can imagine that second wave comes with a lot of trouble throughout the country and we have witnessed that where we have failed rather our whole health system were you know uh, exposed that we were not good enough to handle uh, some of the pandemic if they come uh, in that form so the uh, again reminding me uh, and which has been seen by all of you that the rich people were actually uh, siphoning the available resources and i know many people were keeping three four cylinder in their home and on other side you know the other people were not having any single cylinder similarly the you know vials of the rem remdes v you know they were uh, taken away from the market and it was not available so that whole you know uh, game of life and death started and and we were there on the tv and then trying to say that you know cool down and how to manage your fear and all the problems so this all lockdown and impact of the covid can be seen in terms of losses you know in all area of our development whether it is a finance or mining and and many studies start coming up and then showing that how you know we have gone down then we have a new normal concept this new normal concept was uh new normal concept was you know actually uh, working from home and uh, which you all have seen that how uh, people start working then on other side the people who were manually working had no work and the unemployment goes up and their you know uh, trouble of moving from urban areas to you know their remote villages on foot because the roads were empty there was no vehicle uh, available so uh, you can see this all so you can see uh, this has led to so much turmoil and 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 uh, then we studied uh, many areas so depression during covid and then perception and practices of the you know population regarding covid and then we have this uh, epidemiological profile in uh, social stigma so i just want to say that from the very beginning fortunately we had this uh, you know unani center in our uh, subdivision hospital and uh, their team was engaged with many research areas we able to uh, study able to you know uh, study on various aspect of the covid and uh, we were able to even published and disseminate to the larger population so that was the achievement and at the same time we thought of you know uh, uh, using the unani regimen which can be used for our mild to moderate uh, patient and we have done this uh, ran, uh, this randomized controlled trial open label and we completed 92 cases and uh, this is the title of our study and we have written a paper and soon we will publish it so that is also showing that unani we have the tarik e arba and unani joshanda both uh, if they are used they are quite safe and uh, you know can improve the clinical conditions uh, in in covid patients so that's again uh, one of the great achievement and i can say that this integration has played a role in this difficult time of pandemic then uh, i just want to say that 
this is not first time and that is i'm telling again and again to everybody that uh, we in history have witnessed many pandemics and many millions of people have died in different periods of time this is only just two years we have witnessed this pandemic and we are talking uh, about this covid but just uh, look at this uh, plague of justinian which has uh, started in 500 ad to 590 you can see that only just few years what you know where it was not there the plague was not there otherwise you know how every year or maybe in some year it has huge up surge of of the deaths and the cases so uh, imagine that 100 years of of that suffering which was there leading to 30 to 50 million people died then we have black deaths already we have learned in our schools you know how the black deaths has uh, contributed uh, then uh, we have this uh, great plague of london and uh, this is spanish flu now learning from spanish flu is showing that maybe i think we are going to have the third wave and that is why many of uh, scientists start saying that we are going to have third wave but uh, studying the whole pandemic covid pandemic i i was knowing that third wave would not be there because fortunately those who have suffered in first wave actually were immune in the second wave they had no sign in symptom they were protected so natural infection or natural infection way of they that lead to natural immunity so this our body when they when it has the infection it was able to give good protection a rather serious or or severe form of infection at the more protection than the mild one so that is the learning that if we have large number of people who are who are already suffered from mild to moderate infection will be protected in you know subsequent time and that is what we are seeing so vaccination play a role now this is the two curve which you can uh, which you can see uh, and this is also uh, now showing that the third uh, this omicron has come now this omicron is almost uh, 400 to 500 times more infectious than the delta delta is 70 percent more infectious than the you know our other variants which were there and seeing the infectivity i can say that this is already circulating in the in the world and and those countries which are already uh, you know immunized faster they are having problem of getting this infection you know like uh, israel or we have this uh, hong kong and south africa and and some of the sicily country so uh, islands there they have immunized in a much faster so vaccination protects but it does not you know stop you to have second infection and subsequent infection even the severity is also questionable so the natural infection uh, is much better in seen in this case rather than you know vaccination we have the uh, proof from our india that vaccination is going to decrease the severity and that is why uh, we have to see the other options and maybe i think our homeopathy siddha yunani has to play a role <clears throat> and fortunately i have seen when i was in uh, some of the state like chhattisgarh and uh, madhya pradesh these drugs were actually distributed ayurvedic drugs and uh, yunani drugs were circulated uh, in the packets of our you know modern system like the vitamin c and and other drugs they were given uh, to everybody as a prophylactic so maybe i think uh, we have not experimented but we require such kind of experiment to show that get, whether we can use these drugs for prevention of the infection or if we have very good immune system which is now proven that if we have very good you know our own system and our mind is you know strong like our uh, we are stressless 
which is you know possible fearless then this disease was not creating problem and they were you know protected much better as compared to those who are actually uh, having lot of stress and fearful <coughs> so <coughs> you can see that you know i have covered many of the part like in uh, but uh, this handling of dead bodies was once upon a time you know during this whole pandemic had created lot of issues particularly uh, you know in second wave where uh, you know we had problem of either burying or you know uh, criminating them properly but mental health issue uh, were crop up and we had no facility because they were all isolated i can see uh, quarantine centers there and there were no one who can counsel them and talk to them so we we developed the system of you know having mobile phone and and internet connection in those areas and able to you know at, at least they can talk to each other so these things were there even in hospitals you know that connection was provided and then able to talk to their loved one so that was only but as face to face counseling was not there later on you know many ideas and many strategy were developed where the counseling services and stress management things happened but overall it was uh, you know we had learned that we require some kind of established system of providing mental health care then this is the you know vaccination coverage and doses in in india now this also linked with our wave second wave and whenever you know there was a hue and cry and maybe i think large number of people suffer from the infection uh, subsequently you can see that in august we have high number of you know acceptance of first and second dose rather than in the beginning you know when we had the second wave then only you know people and now again it has gone down so the omicron is now giving uh, some force towards so what is learning that you know actually in fear the people are getting vaccination that should not be case you know it should be learned that vaccination is uh, a process or say a strategy of of uh, in public health which provide uh, you know health and already uh, we know that many of the disease were able to control but uh, on other side you can have controversial things also but we require more and more safe vaccines and better vaccines in much better way now look at this one picture i can show you that actually deaths occur more in above 60 years of age but the vaccination was more in you know 18 to 44 so younger population go forward and get the vaccination faster and more as compared to in those which is required so it's very interesting that those who require more get the less and that is true for our socio economic status also or maybe i think the religious religion wise or maybe caste wise and you can see that that kind of variation so when we have understood this then we can focus our you know activities so the way forward in a vaccine is that we have to focus on district where it is less and where the coverage is less then we can you know concentrate on those areas then uh, in which socio demographic areas it is more maybe i think in some places host to host vaccination is required which was in the beginning was totally banned it was not allowed even everybody has to go to the center and so disabled and many people were not able to get it so such kind of flexibility is required so that's also a learning for us and and uh, some changes occurred also we have the workforce which is mobilized and and then we have to catch these all you know people then use of technology in carrying the vaccine uh, is also uh, come forward according to the census we already know that uh, you know there is a homeless people they don't have aadhar they don't have many things so we have to catch them and you know bring to the uh, fold of vaccination and also other services so we have the nomads prisoners inmates and the mental health 
uh, institutions patient, then old days home patients, the beggar in the roadside, they are all people who require, you know, the services when uh, we talk about vaccination. Then uh, utilization of provided vaccine is less in private. So from the very beginning, we are giving emphasis on equal distribution of, although private is providing more health services as compared to government, but in such kind of uh, calamities or, or maybe I think pandemic, what we have learned that actually they have gone back and they were not providing the best services as compared to the government hospital. So government hospital were able to handle more COVID problem than the private. And this is one of the example, even the vaccination, it is given to them, but only, if, you know, seven to 9% only they have, you know, able to provide. For children now, vaccine is already approved and it will be start because the trial is going on and it can start any time. But I don't think it's required because the children are already, you know, infected. They have already developed the immunity. You know, this is one of the study done in Maulana Jad Medical College where 90% of our children are actually having antibodies. So there's no, uh, you know, enforcement required or maybe I think mandatory compulsory vaccination required in children. So we can make the strategy on the basis of, you know, evidence or understanding. You know, we don't have much deaths in children. We don't have, you know, much severe problems in them. So it's better, you know, not to make it compulsory to immunize children. Rather, we should open the school and it's much better to open. <clears throat> Then uh, in the end, I just uh, want to say that ending of COVID is, you know, not just by uh, we believe that this is going to end. There are uh, different areas where, you know, it is done. Like medical, medically, we can say number of cases and deaths are now going down. So it is going down. So COVID will go down. Pandemic declaration of ending is not over because the social ending is still going on. Anxiety is remain fear of epidemic and you know it is it is still there. So when it is going to be totally away, then I think we can say we have ended the COVID. But the economic ending is when everything go go back, you know. And many of the pandemic we have seen rather the you know, come back to the normal is much faster and rather more stronger. So the economic, we have started recently, but maybe I think it requires some time to come back to the normal uh, of the economy. And then we can say that, yes, economically, you know, COVID pandemic has ended. And politically, maybe I think somewhere health ministry or maybe the parliament has to decide that, yes, now the government uh, is no more in grip of this pandemic and now we are free so uh, these these are the different terms which are used and that is what should be learned um, all of us as a public health people that uh, just claiming that no it is no more a problem it require many areas to be covered <clears throat> so uh, future is that it is telling us we should have the resilient health system Resilient health system is, you know, flexible, dynamic, and dynamic is only possible in India when we have integrated. I have already written that integrated alternative system is very, very important to have, you know, licensing with each other. Then only I think we can make very resilient health system because everybody can be covered. You know, we cannot leave people. Some people are just believing in some form of medicine. So they should also be folded be in the fold. Another one is we require very strong disease surveillance system where the capacity of the people should be strengthened. Capacity in the terms of our laboratories and lab assist, you know, we, we don't have, I was surprised to learn and you must be knowing that, you know, the diagnostic facility of this COVID was very less in the beginning. We have only 24, 25 labs and in the beginning, only two labs were there, but in the end, you know, today we have more than thousands of labs throughout the country. So that is 
the way it has been developed. So if we committed, I think we can definitely develop the good surveillance system. The community involvement is still we have to find out, you know, good SOPs and how to involve the engaged and you know get their participation where we are looking. You know, somewhere they have started their own uh, management of the cases and handling things. That should not be the case. They should be empowered in a proper manner. This is a learning today of COVID that community involvement through a very good SOPs are required. And guidelines which is prepared by the government, actually not for the public, but uh, for the involvement of the community was not there, but public was there. So as an individual, the people were have to follow. But that should not be the case. And then mental health counselors, psychiatrists, we don't have very good or maybe i think sufficient number of the counselors and handling those all new uh, problems like the covid has, has shown us so uh, these are future uh, areas and in in integrated health system i want to say that we require more uh, funding to have the research and always open to accept each other you know and always come forward to have you know uh, joint ventures then only uh, we can strengthen this part otherwise uh, you know we will not be able to do justice to uh, the growing need of this integration which is now today available so thank you very much this is our book we have written many of the issues uh, you know of the mental and epidemiological issues has been written here any question are there, I am ready to uh, answer. So thank you very much. Thank you, uh, thank you, sir, for a comprehensive presentation. Uh, based on your experiences and uh, lessons learned, it is a fact community medicine uh, provided us deep insights into COVID-19 and its impact on Indian population with respect to various aspects like mental health, stress, various perceptions, behaviors, sensitive issues like handling dead bodies, and of course, community involvement is an important one, as we just mentioned. Uh, so, uh, we have two, I've just picked up two questions. Uh, coming from the modern side, and you just uh, talked about that now we are facing a new challenge of new variants, Omicron. Uh, uh, from the modern perspective and coming from the modern side, as you are involved in uh, various work related to IU system, uh, what uh, role do you think, uh, important role can these traditional system, the UNAMI system can play? Yeah, the drug which we have, uh, you know, experimented, that is a good one, like Joshanda or Ayush, you know, Kara, that's a good one, it should continue. It should continue for another maybe three months or four months. So it is an immune booster. You know, we require immune booster. This Omicron is infectious, but not the killer. That's a good thing. So what requires is, you know, your own self, like whatever antibodies you have are strengthened, or maybe your immune system is good. I think their Yunani, homeopathy, Ayurveda can play a role. And you should come forward with the solution. Yes, uh, people are looking forward. They don't want to eat, uh, you know, uh, rem remdesivir, which has so many life side effects. It's not proven. You know, still we don't have good evidence of uh, these all antiviral drugs. So rather some of the preparation like Siddha has uh, Kudnevir. Kudnevir is having antiviral property. So why not we should use those all medicines? Yes, sir. Uh, true. Uh, that is very correct. And our uh, council under the leadership of our Director General CCRM have planned many collaborative uh, research studies uh, to uh, explore this aspect only. So thank you for your insight, sir. I'll just check whether we have any other questions. I have one question. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, what is your view about this booster dose that is being talked about with this new yeah, variant? I have not never said I have never said I have I've skipped no, that. You, otherwise, people are talking. Ah, booster dose. Look, the vaccine is meant for. Uh, vaccine is prepared. When it was, it was prepared. It was used the uh, 
spike protein that was at that time in the beginning and we yeah. have not changed it so the antibodies is uh, you know produced by this vaccine is going to protect the old one this delta is not going to be you know protected by the vaccine similarly the omicron is not at all where you we already have more than 50 uh, you know mutations are already occurred so the vaccine whichever is available are useless in new variant and rather i'll say the vaccine which are produced by the spike protein is useless i'm sorry i'm i'm speaking on the platform which is a official platform but because you have asked me and i am i should not hide anything we are all scientists the co vaccine is much better because the co vaccine is made from the dead virus total virus so antibodies are meant for whole virus so the new virus omicron has the significant component of the old virus also so we have the antibodies for the old you know component of the virus total virus so if we use the co vaccine which is much better so the booster is not going to help you because this booster of co vaccine no. ah, booster is co vaccine is also not not useful because the vaccine yeah, because we have taken earlier covid shield now we should two doses already produce sufficient amount of vaccine uh, 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 antibodies so there is no chance that booster is going to create another you know beneficial chance for newer viruses like the omicron it is not going to help so no, no. please don't fall into the prey of booster dose okay <laughs> my point was Very that clear. earlier we have taken covid shield should we go for next booster dose of co vaccine Yes, I can say not a booster. It is again is actually COVID shield is different vaccine and co vaccine is different. So it is going to give you extra antibodies, which is not available from the COVID shield. Okay. So In people those case, who are can, they were then the people those who are going for new vaccination they should go for co vaccine, not for COVID shield. Yes. Okay. It's better. It's a I'll, great information. Uh, uh, there is one question. Although our uh, DG sir has highlighted about the role of Yunani and COVID 13, but there is Mr. Sheikh Adil Raza. He wants to know uh, the Yunani medicine's effect on COVID 19. So maybe our DG sir or anyone, if can, they can throw light on this. Sir, can Professor you hear me? Malik, uh, can tell much better than because I don't know many names of the Yunani uh, yes. drugs. See, for Yunani medicine, thank you so much, sir, Professor Jigal Kishore Sahib, for clarifying this. What Dr. Manchanda Sahib has asked is wonderful. Uh, um, but yes, it is there that many people have taken Covishield, and there is always a confusion that one should go for Covaxin or Covishield. And because COVID Covaxin for long was not available for many places, later on it came. It surfaced, so most of the people probably have taken COVID shield by now. But I think that part is over, and your good self is all suggesting very good way that probably that is not going to work in as a booster or as a new vaccine, particularly for the new uh, variant, this Omicron virus uh, variant. So probably that is not going to work. As far as the United System of Medicine is concerned, uh, we have, uh, as uh, I also told um, and con conveyed in my talk, that we have issued many advisories for general public also and for the practitioners also. And Dr. Um, Professor Jugal Kishore Sai was also in his talk was suggesting that he is he was advocating about Dushanda, he's advocating about uh, certain uh, Yunani medicines, particularly in the light of the experiences which Dr. Jugal Kishore also has in his hospital, because we had a collaboration research research with Dr. Jugal Kishore Sai and his team in Sabdajang Hospital and uh, wonderful results we have received about the immunity boosting part of it. So I think because we all know that COVID-19 is a problem that yes, immunity is an issue as he was also suggesting with antibodies, you all know. So I think these IU systems of medicine have a wonderful effect in these, these kind of situations. And for that, Yunani medicine also, like other systems also, has good uh, effects in these. And we have been advocating, we are not, never have been claiming that it is going to treat it or it is going to cure it or it is going to take care of that part. Is, but yes, immunity part of it, yes, it does work. And good results by our studies, which we did for public health research activities, we did for almost 40,000 patients in different parts of the country through six of our centers. 
we good good got good results similarly we did add-on therapies in the conventional uh, allopathic hospitals especially care hospitals like that's of that so of professor jubil kishore sahib with him and his team and we are finding good results for them and we are getting the results published in the good papers so i think that part yes unani does work up to that extent but as far as the vaccination part is concerned something i think that is mandatory it is not going to replace those vaccination part or something so as an immune boosters yes we should use it and as just recently just uh, jubal kishore sahib was suggesting that we shall continue to have all these things even the first wave come second wave come third wave come whatever so we shall continue to have these immune boosters uh, in in the ayush systems of medicine and those dietary uh, factors which we have been advocating from time to time so up to that extent yes it it, it does work that's it thank you thank you sir is, so now there we, is another uh, question we will move just, to our next just expert. one more question yes sir just one more question you said that it is more infective than the delta virus infectious. infectious so is there any different way of spread of infection or the the way remains the same like by droplet infection and by fomites and or is there any other thing that has come into our till now we don't have evidence although from the very beginning we uh, many of the because this whole pandemic is now controlled by uh, not scientists but by politics and other thing so they 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 refuse to accept uh, it can be airborne also but airborne is like you know we have a fine particle uh, you know and able to have the virus in that partic uh, in that you know droplets so that droplet can go as a air part of the air so you can have the airborne otherwise fomite and droplet are the main source uh, but when it attached to the surface of the cell you know the affinity of this uh, you know antigen is higher because uh, the virus also learned when it multiply in the cell it learned how to attach with the human cell you know much better way so that changes you know and that is why the this virus antigen was able to make so many mutation to become more infectious you know as a beauty of any living organism on earth that they will try to remain alive you know more into the you know survival mechanism that is why thank you thank you i think we should move on that because uh, uh, we need to wind up by uh, 4:30 so i now i'll introduce our uh, next testing speaker dr raj k manchanda sir he is uh, md in homeopathy and has done md in healthcare and is presently the director ayush directorate of ayush under department of health and family welfare government of delhi India and Secretary Information and Communication for Research in Liga Medicorum Homeopathica Internationalis. So he is international figure also. He has 35 years of professional experience as clinician, dermatologist, researcher, administrator, and teacher of homeopathy, including seven years as Director General of Central Council for Research in Homeopathy under Ministry of Ayush. He has co-authored textbook of dermatology for homeopaths in English and Spanish. and a handbook of recent trends in homeopathy for infectious diseases in india and abroad he has several peer reviewed international publications including clinical research publications on subclinical hypothyroidism tubercular lymphadenitis multiple drug resistant tuberculosis lichen simplex chronicus dermatological fungal infections to name a few he has been conferred honorary uh, fellowship homeopathy from faculty of homeopathy Uh, united kingdoms and honorary phd from cyber jaya university college of medical sciences malaysia he has been honored with handmaid medal 2011 by institute for history of medicine robert bosch foundation germany for his active participation in indo german collaboration and state award in 2010 by the government of delhi for the meritorious works undertaken in the field of homeopathy Besides many other regulars and meritorious sevas confirmed upon him, so it's an honor for us, sir, that you have joined us today uh, with your team. Please, sir. Now I request you to kindly present. So thank you, Gazala. I think 
Niranjan is there with us. Hello, as host. Hello. Uh, hello. Niranjan, please help sir in sharing the slides. Hello, Niranjan. Niranjan? May I request the team to kindly help Manchanda, sir? Uh, Niranjan? I know the problem. Actually, I'm working from Mac. There is some problem with Go meeting whenever I use Mac in, in sharing slides. So I have just shared my PPT with Niranjan. So he is requested to kindly run my PPT. I've just shared. Because the same problem is coming. If I'll say yes, so it will not happen. And so there is the, the problem is going to come. So Niranjan, please go ahead. Hello. It will take just one minute. Yes, sir, they're doing it. We'll wait okay. for one minute. So he'll just do it because I can see again it's, it's asking funny question on my screen. And if I'm going to answer, then then again I'll not be able to. So anyway, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share our experiences at Delhi government. As you all know that during this COVID pandemic, because of a lot of panic all around and and Ministry gave some idea, Ministry, Government of India, Ministry of Ayush, Government of India had set up a narrative that what IU systems can do. And that narrative was very clear that IU systems, through their advocacy of good and healthy lifestyle, healthy dietary practices, and with some certain medicine, can help in maintaining and improving the general immunity of the persons. So, taking that policy forward, many of the state government did a lot of innovations and, 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 and have done some public health initiatives. So, similarly, in Delhi also, we did a lot of activities. I'm going to give an overview of those activities in all Ayush systems and specifically then in Yunani. And I'm joined by with me by two of my colleagues from Government of Delhi, Dr. Paraswani and Dr. Noman from ANU Tibia College. Both have written also papers, some review articles, and have captured data. They are also going to share their side of experiences. So please, first slide, please. Next, please. So now, Ministry of Ayush gave some policy guidelines that what we need to do during pandemic. They give certain guidelines related to preventive and prophylactic use of IU systems. Then how to do symptomatic management of COVID-19 like illnesses, like we all treat influenza every other day. So this COVID-19 is also a type of influenza. So what more we can do out of our traditional knowledge? And in cases of serious stages, when a person is in ICU and is having a severe illness, how these systems can be used. Fortunately, in Delhi, we could experiment with all the three stages. Next, please. So a concept was there, training was advocated, and interdisciplinary team was also prepared. So similarly, in Delhi also, we had interdisciplinary team at state level, and that team was guiding us to, to take multiple Initiatives. Next, please. So in Delhi, we have about 173 dispensaries. Of these, 22 are of Yunani. And then we have medical colleges, ANU Tibia College, and Chaudhary Brahm Prakash on IU side. And uh, Ayurvedic and Yunani Tibia College were declared as COVID hospital during this time. Next, please. Then we have Yunani systems of medicine under CGHS, NDMC, MCD, and ESI. Next, please. So this is the overall infrastructure of Ayush 
in Delhi. Next, please. So, based on the Government of India advisory, Government of Delhi also issued advisory through all its social media, print media, wherein all systems were advocated along with self-care measures. Yunani Jushanda was also advocated along with use of khazoor and other modalities that were advocated. And patients were guided through our network of dispensaries, through telemedicine, to use these modalities as an immuno boosters. Next, please. So this, these were the details. And these medicines were freely distributed through our network of dispensaries. And our doctors were also posted at COVID testing center, COVID quarantine centers, everywhere. And wherever our doctors were posted, they had option of using these modalities along with the standard care that was already provided by our conventional colleagues. Next. So in, in during the first wave, dedicated COVID care centers when we when we created that A and U Tibia College. Next, please. Next. We experimented with all possibilities like Overnight, we improved the quality of our IPD care, like video two-way video systems were installed. And we could treat more than 1,200 patients with Ayurvedic and Yunani medicine. Fortunately, there were no casualty because all the patients, those who were required to be referred, were referred timely. And But here we experimented with the about the acceptability of the golden milk, acceptability of the diet according to the IU systems and acceptability of Quath, acceptability of Jushanda with the patients. And yoga sessions were also given to all the patients, those who were admitted here. Next, please. We have, fortunately, our IU centers in different conventional hospital. So all these IU centers were also strengthened and letters were written to medical superintendents of all these conventional hospitals that Ayush modality should also be integrated to the extent it is feasible with the limited manpower we have at those centers. So at GTB hospital especially, we could use Ayush Yunani system specifically with in many, many patients. Next, please. Training was given to all our medical officers and all these persons were not only trained but were actually placed in different strategic locations for the testing, for the treatment, for giving general ideas, for giving counseling to the patients along with them. Along with that, all private practitioners of Delhi were given training. All registered practitioners with DPCP were offered training and these trainings were given through series of webinars. Next, please. Ayush immuno boosters were freely distributed in all the containment zones according to the acceptability. Patient used that. And I think millions of doses of these immuno boosters were given to different in different localities. And at many places, even the data was also recorded with the help of our research councils. Next. In this training, what we specifically focused that our doctor should develop a rational approach. They must know how to make diagnosis. They must know what are the entry cases of different testing reports. And they must know that they should not make tall claims. They should develop responsible attitude during this stage of pandemic. So this was the focus of our training of both government as well as private practitioners. Next, please. Doctors were also encouraged to use e-platform of Government of India. I got training so that whatever updates are coming, they should always keep themselves abreast with that. Next, please. Yoga instructors were deployed in all our COVID care centers with the help of 
गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इंस्टीट्यूशन मोरारजी देसाई योगा एंड नेचुरोपैथिक सेंटर एंड विद दी सी सी आर वाई एन वी कुड प्रोवाइड योगा इंस्ट्रक्टर टू ऑल दी इंस्टीट्यूशन नेक्स्ट प्लेस सो इंटरेस्टिंग पार्ट वॉज दैट वी एनकरेज ऑल दी आयुष फैकल्टी both in colleges as well as in our on our gdmo side to do data collection and to support our research councils in undertaking special, specific studies like in ayurvedic at a and u tibia college we could undertake we were part of the study on chavanprash we were part of the study on iu 64 and we were part of the study even on unani system of medicine next please and we also did our own work of doing retro retrospective analysis of ayurvedic dietary modification prakriti analysis mizaj analysis and retro retrospective cohort studies to understand the characteristics of the pandemic next even in homeopathy also we did similar kind of studies next please we not only studied this but we encouraged all our officers to publish this for the profession like this is one paper that was published on the prakriti analysis of covid 19 patient an observational study from a and u tibia college next this was on the chavan prash where we were just part of in one of the arm then this is another study this wapas aa jao so this was another study analyzing the this is about chavan prash next please then analyzing the symptomatology and effectiveness of ayurvedic treatment so this is we did the characterization on the pand pandemic according to the ayurvedic perspective next then on homeopathic side also we published series of papers characterizing the and remedy and working out the remedy profile of the pandemic next then there is a concept that is known as prognostic factor research in homeopathy so we use that to identify the precise indications of the drugs next then when there was lot of data we realized that many a times because of the biases of different physicians data get corrupted so what are those biases that are bottlenecks for the high quality data collection so we published one article and then gave training to our doctors based on this these observations for better data collection so this helped us in having better data collection during second wave next please then we discussed about the data that we have collected how much it is generalizable at a global at, at, at global level so we compared our data with the effort similar efforts being done in all parts of the globe next so this was also published in unani system of medicine we used unani medicine as prophylactic in at covid positive patient those who were at home isolation and even at gtb hospital even all our unani dispensaries were converted into for the post covid counseling next so all the doctors unani doctors were posted in quarantine center testing center and even for the migrants and incoming persons were also screened by our unani doctors next please so this is one of one of the unique position if you remember in the early part of the pandemic when there was a group of markers were admitted in mandoli jail so they preferred a unani system medicine so we immediately deployed all over doctors at mandoli jail next and wazirabad quarantine center so all these were quarantines all these overnight these prisons were converted into quarantine centers but not as part of prison but as quarantine centers and our, do our unani doctors worked very well at these places and and their services were very well accepted <coughs> next please 
and this was the medical examination being done by our doctors next please this is the formulation that was being used at gtb hospital next we also used during post covid like for incidental infections in gtb hospital dr parachwani used unani system of medicine next please <coughs> this was the just glimpse of our study at ayurvedic and unani tibia college study next so a special formulation was also prepared at unani tibia college and that was widely circulated to all in official circles and to our patients next and these are some of the publications now i am going i am i'm joined by two of my colleagues first dr noman from ayurvedic and unani tibia college who is assistant professor and then we have our chief medical officer dr paraswani so they both work very proactively and have and are part of some many of these publications so i request them to kindly share their experiences and what kind of more support they want from the council if we are preparing for our the next casualties next please next next slide next please so these were five publications so broadly i would like to say that our information that we are used during this is based on tradition and authority and developed on the basis of trial and error what we have been able to do with some of these publication that now we have some cohort studies what we have to now work towards is that we have to take the next level of randomized control trials wherever it is feasible with these modalities next please so we need to link our education in our institutions with research to face all these challenges next please so now we have constructed a makeshift 100 bedded hospital during the second wave what we realized that ayurvedic and tibia college was having many many patients where oxygen requirement was there like in many hospitals and we had to refer many many patients so now we are having a 100 bedded hospital even with icu beds all these things are already ready for handling patients and and if there is a such type of casualty comes this hospital will be used as an integrated care where we will have many possibility of using unani system of medicine medicines so my request to council is that if such situation come we should be ready with our protocols and medicine so that those can be not only used for the patient but we should be able to do high quality data collection thank you thank you very much for this opportunity now i'll request my colleagues to share their experiences during this covid pandemic thank you so you thank you very sharing. much sir am i audible yes 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 oh well thank you very much manchanda sir for giving me this opportunity uh, to share my experiences of uh, this uh, covid duty so first of all uh, respected dignitaries present on board and delegates who have joined from all across the country i must say that i feel extremely honored to be a part of this knowledge gaining and sharing platform provided by professor asim ali khan saab the director general ccrm ministry of ayush actually uh, amongst all the healthcare staff of tibia college i was also fortunate to contribute through my services uh, to the country during these hard times sir has already given a background of this study and uh, i should say that i was one of the investigators along with dr naseem akhtar khan uh, who is the associate professor and consultant molja at tibia college karolbagh 
and also we were in close association with uh, dr usama akram who is a research officer at ccrm and, and of course with other officials uh, uh, so uh, in starting as jugal kishore sir also highlighted actually in the initial phase we were uh, short formation but a lot of happening there and slowly that learned about this novel coronavirus and in fact we are uh, still learning now so basically uh, at that time when the study was conducted the main rationale was to address the challenges uh, which were coming by this disease and to accelerate the research needed in uh, resource limited settings study was to observe and assess the safety and effectiveness of uh, the identified unani regimen as head of therapy i think we lost his voice dr noman we cannot hear you dr noman maybe there's some net problem we'll wait for a while maybe i'll just call him and let him know or we can start or we can request paraswani to meanwhile start then he will no i think he's available his voice is available dr noman dr noman are you there otherwise we'll request dr paraswani no i, I can't see him So what do you suggest, Manchanda sir? Sir, I think first one he can start and then he will join later. Let him sort out his. Okay. Uh -huh. so let first one share please. his screen. Am I audible to everyone? Yes. Yes. Um, just a minute, ma'am. I'm trying to share my screen. i think we can see your screen is this your screen only we can see the gmail open ma'am uh, is my slides uh, is it showing my slides now yes 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 okay ma'am just make it full screen and please go ahead yes ma'am now i have done the side slide screen so respected dignitaries and panelists and dear delegates a very good evening to all of you first of all i will like to render my sincere gratitude to dr banchanda sir for giving me this opportunity to speak on this platform and i will also like to thank uh, professor asim ali khan who is my esteemed teacher also D dg ccrm for organizing a web series of these uh, webinars which will definitely enlighten us and help us to work efficiently in future so i will be discussing about the delhi government unani services what we did in covid-19 so as um, already discussed we worked on four mainly phases one was the prophylactic medicines were distributed second was we gave unani remedies in home isolation cases and third was in gtp covid care center we were able to give mild to moderate uh, covid-19 patients were given unani interventions this i will discuss in the coming slides so first of all in all our dispensaries in unani uh, in delhi government we have 22 dispensaries in all of them all the people were given all the patients who came to us were given prophylactic medicines so those prophylactic medicines were sharbat unab habe azgand arki ajeeb steam inhalation and khamira marwadi mainly and we divided categorized the patients in three categories first was the high risk people that is who were health workers or police or the traffic policemen who were at high risk of acquiring the disease and second where the they were also at high risk the family of covid positive patients and third was the general patients who so ever used to come to us even today we are continuing as dr jugal kishor emphasized that we should continue with all the preventive and prophylactic measures and dr asim ali sir professor asim ali sir very well told that unani has immense treasure of prevention of disease and we have a very significant role to play in the enhancing immunity of the people so we are continuing with these measures 
And this is a rough data which shows that almost 9,449 patients were given prophylactic medicine in all the dispensaries of Delhi government. And um, the results was very good. Due, although we, can, we could not follow up all the patients, but still we did not come up with many patients who turned out to be positive. And on the basis of this, we um, we had tried to frame two studies. One is already published. That is an open label prospective interventional study to assess the prophylactic role of Ayush interventions, which I will be discussing in the later slides. And second is the retroprospective observational study to assess prophylactic role of Unani medicines. In Ehbas Hospital, as I'm posted there also, we gave uh, prophylactic Unani medicines to many patients. So what I have done is I have collected the list of data of Ehbas uh, staff and health workers who got positive in uh, both the waves. And then I am retroprospective analyzing the data that how many of the people who took Unani medicines uh, got positive in, the, in both the waves. And this is under process. Then the study which we got published, it was a unique study in the way where we had a collaboration of Ayurveda, Unani, and homeopathy wing of GTP, Unani, GTP unit. And uh, we all gave the prophylactic medicines to the high-risk people according to the advisories of Ministry of Ayush. In Unani, we gave Khamira Marwari. In Ayurveda, Sanchamni Vati was given. And in Homeopathy Arsenicum album, 30 was given. And then we compiled a data of almost 1,200 patients, high-risk patients, it's to be noted. And then only one, um, 1,179 could found the final sample size because of the attrition. And uh, we analyzed this data and it was found that only 16 out of 1179 turned out to be positive because we had a close follow up of, of all those high risk people who came to us for, to take prophylactic medicines. And these people were usually the staff of GTP hospital or they were the family of the COVID positive patients who used to come us for uh, to take Unani or Ayush remedies in COVID-19. Then coming to the, uh, the second thing which we did is that all those people who were willing to take Ayush intervention, speci specifically Unani medicines, along with the conventional medicines, they were in home isolation. Some, some of them were asymptomatic, some of them were symptomatic. So we used to call their uh, relatives and telephonically we used to <clears throat> interact with the COVID positive patient and according to the symptoms and according to the advisory keeping in mind the advisory is given and the uh, the advisories and what unani practitioners should do for the covid 19 patients that was strictly kept in mind and almost one one five three patients of home isolation were covered in both the ways in first wave it was 9 30 and in second it was 223 <coughs> and a study is framed, it is under process, and of pub, it's going to be um, uh, for publication soon. So we framed a, a study that is an observational prospective cohort study to assess role of Unani remedies in COVID-19 home isolation patients. In this study, we excluded the patients who were asymptomatic because we also wanted to assess what was the symptom symptomatology of the patients who came to us and then we found that eight unani remedies were prescribed to them uh, six of them khamira marwarid habe bukhar sharbat unab ayush joshanda and steam inhalation with arkejim were the most frequently used medicines and out of um 733 patients only one patient was admitted to the hospital because he got some severity and complications rest of them were we were able to manage them and here I would like to emphasize that many of the patients, they opted for only to use Unani medicines because they said we uh, we can we are well and we have mild cough fever and we will only go by Unani medicines who had great faith in Unani medicines. So many of the patients among them were who only use Unani medicines. Then third was when GTP was de declared as a designated COVID care center. So what happened? Um, our worthy director, uh, GTP hospital, he gave us permission to use Unani interventions. And it was first time in the Delhi government that a hospital uh, gave us permission. Later on, many hospitals, uh, Ayush Joshanda and Milk was given in many hospitals because of the hard work of our director, because they were pursuing and they were continuously writing to all the directors of the uh, COVID care centers to integrate Unani uh, and Ayush systems in the conventional system. And integration of Ayush system was done and we were allowed to give Ayush Joshanda. It was given from the kitchen of the GTP hospital and almost 3,855 patients were given Ayush Joshanda. 
the quality of patients improved a lot. Patients accepted and all the patients took Ayush Joshanda and Ayush got very well. And then we were also allowed to give Khamira Marwadi to the non-diabetic patients. And 647 non-diabetic patients were given Khamira Marwadi, which included some pregnant women also. And we had a very uh, good response. And the uh, quality of life, the patients felt that it's helping them in fast recovery. They had a, in, very positive uh, things were found in this work, what we did there. So this is a glimpse of what we did month-wise distribution of the patients. And this is how Ayush Joshanda was directly. We saw how it is prepared in the kitchen. And then from, from preparation to the kitchen, to the delivery, we, uh, we just assured that everything is going on um, accurately. There is no, so that there is no lacuna in the delivery of our um, system. And uh, what uh, personally we found in Delhi government, the most important and effectively used medicines was Ayush Joshanda. Majun Rahul Mumineen, Kamira Marwadi, and steam inhalation by RKG. Here I would like to mention, and it gives me immense pleasure to say that when we were uh, covering the home isolation COVID positive patients, so many of the doctors from Ehbas Hospital also turned out to be COVID positive, and I gave them steam inhalation with RK Ajib and uh, Ayush Roshan and other medicines, what they uh, according to their symptoms. And almost I can say this. Um, uh, uh, with a um, sense of uh, with a great happiness that almost all the doctors who turned out in a bus hospital who turned out to be positive they used uh, a rkg steam inhalation and they recommended also also we had sent rkg to a doctor a professor in mamsi because of its eff immense effect in covid 19 in the symptoms it was very it was found very effective then post covid management it was as we all know that patients they had a lot of stress so all our unani dispensaries were converted to post covid centers where we counseled the patients and we saw that the main complaint was general debility and breathlessness and all we gave them uh, unani medicines and they were very well taken care of by the unani medicines a lot of patients benefited then after the second wave, we all know we came up with a very devastating disease that was the fungal or mucomycosis. And in the GTP hospital, seeing the record what, uh, of immense acceptability in the for sec two waves, we were allowed to give some medicines. And we were specially told that to give some medicines which will help the patient with the side effects of the amphotericin, like the gastritis, and they have low uh, potassium levels, which due to which they have a lot of pain. So we were allowed, to, by the permission of the director, sir, we were allowed to give Satigilo and uh, all the local, whatever uh, local applica application medicines we had, we were allowed to give them also. and. Then uh, uh, in Yunani, by Yunani system of medicine, I was able to manage 45 patients. In addition to the conventional medicine, we were giving them Yunani medicines. And uh, even the doctors, assistant professors from the ophthalmology department, they approached us to have a collaborative research so that we can come up with something which is acceptable to the world and we can do a work in a very organized way, which is under process. And then in this course of treatment, what I observed is that there was relapse of mucomycosis. That is, if a patient was uh, discharged today after a gap of seven days or one month, he was he was again admitted in the hospital with the same complaint in the other eye or in the other sinuses. So with that preview, what I started is on the discharge we used to give patients all the Unani medicines which we give, which we could give. Like I gave them course Musafiyakun, course Kafur, even to control uh, diabetes, we also used to give, give them anti-diabetic Unani medicines. If they had pain, we used to give them Rogani. So if they have some fungal in the mouth, we used to give them Zoruticola. So every medicine was given to the patient according to his symptoms and whatever best we could give, including the blood purifiers, so that maybe the fungus will because uh, we all know that Yunani is based on the humoral theory. So uh, 10 patients who have been discharged from the um, hospital, they are still under our treatment and still three months have elapsed and still, um, thank God, there is no relapse in these patients and the treatment is going on and we are getting a very positive response from those patients also. They are very happy with the Yunani regimens, whatever they are taking. <coughs> so... <clears throat> Now, discussing about the published work, we have many review papers uh, pertaining to COVID-19, like the analytical case study of mildly symptomatic uh, 
COVID-19 patients with reference to Mizaj. These, this is the observational study which was done in Andrew Tibia College. And uh, then we have the second analytical study based on uh, study of met basal metabolic ra uh, rate of mildly symptomatic COVID-19 patient. It was also done in uh, Tibia College, uh, Karol Ba. So, and uh, I had also a review paper on role of Unani medicine in COVID-19. It was also published in Journal of Emergency and Internal Medicine. Basically, uh, this paper, I got an opportunity to present in an international conference in UK. And I presented the role of Unani medicine in COVID-19, where I enlightened what Unani can do in COVID-19 and what we are doing in India, how there is integration of Unani with the conventional system of world medicine, and it is working very well. And the people all over the world, they were very happy to see, and they were very curious. All of them wanted, it, uh, believe me, it was the longest session in the conference, and all of them wanted that we should have some uh, alternate things which we can use so as to prevent this pandemic and um, that is the reason it was also given a best speaker award also and later on the paper was also published so we have many publications under process also some of them are the observational prospective cohort study to assess the role of unani remedies in home covid 19 home isolation patients which i discussed an observational study to assess the role of mizaj which has been already um, sent for publication and we are waiting for the uh, response of the journal and perception and patient, patient satisfaction with Ayush medical services provided at GTP COVID care center in COVID positive patients experiences and challenges. Basically, we also developed a Google form where we um, just noted, tried to rule out all the feedback of the patients from uh, what what was their feedback and what was their analysis and perception of Unani, how they felt after, they, after taking Unani medicines. So that uh, Google form we will also analyze and we will go for some publication soon with that also. So now coming to the challenges, we all know that this pandemic came all of a sudden. We were out of mind what to do and how to manage in spite um, there by the uh, continuous uh, support and continuous encouragement of our director, Manchanda sir. We were able to do a lot, uh, lot um, many things in, um, and we contributed, you know, anything, you know, any medicines were given in hospital at every level we contributed. But um, due to some ethical constraints, the publications are less, we are looking forward in future, this constraint should be removed and we should, uh, their work was not pre-planned, we didn't, we didn't have we, we there was lack of planned uh, studies in our work and we, there was obviously lack of collaboration with unani research organizations if it if there would have been a collaboration with council or any other research organization the work could have been planned and it could have yielded much more promising results so I conclude uh, that Directorate of Ayush GNCT Delhi worked in its full capacity capability to find, fight this pandemic. And definitely Unani played a very distinctive role in prophylaxis and prevention of COVID-19. And it was also uh, found effective in COVID-19 patients and uh, also managed mild to moderate COVID-19 patients effectively. Unani medicine is indeed a boon to healthcare and continues to contribute for prevention of disease and promotion of health. And thank you so much for um, patient listening. And I hope in future if we will work in collaboration so that we can come out with very good results, which will be acceptable worldwide. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Dr. Paraswani. And I'm sure uh, uh, under the leadership of our current director general, he's very open to collaboration and we did collaborate. And uh, uh, you know, ministry is always advocating on intra-Ayush collaborations. And then among Unani organization, we, uh, we should do and we are doing it. And I'm yes, uh, sure. definitely. And we'll be keeping it as one more, you know, we can have it in more robust form. We are already having, but we'll see that. Then we'll give it as a recommendation from this webinar to our uh, competent authorities to take it forward. Uh, so, Majanda sir, that is it. Can we move forward, or are we yes, waiting yes, for Doctor Noman? Yes, I think Doctor Noman is here. He can talk in another five minutes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So we'll ask you can hear just your data. No introduction now. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, uh, there was some issue. So, uh, just uh, briefly going through. Uh, this presentation so uh, the title the main uh, purpose of this study was to observe and assess the safety and effectiveness of the unani regimen 
as an add-on therapy in preventing the progression of severity of the disease and as uh, we are talking about the collaboration ma'am is talking about so this was uh, one of the collaborative works that was conducted at dedicated covid health center at ayurvedic and yunani tibia college and uh, with ccrum so next So this was uh, basically a prospective interventional study uh, with case control and randomized. And uh, uh, we had certain criteria for inclusion and exclusion. And in this study, uh, 60 completed cases were taken, 30 each in uh, intervention and as well as in control group. So I'm just uh, briefly talking about uh, the outcome of the studies, uh, basically the primary outcome. So as you can see uh, the trend of this uh, through the trend of this um, graph, the change in disease status from uh, COVID positive to COVID negative. And we can see that uh, with the intervention group, 50% uh, of the patients were uh, turned out to be COVID negative in seven days when they were tested at seventh day, 50% cases were COVID negative. Next. So briefly, we can sum up that uh, uh, in this study, although uh, the, all the laboratory findings and other details have been submitted to CCRM, and I think uh, it will uh, be published very soon and will definitely provide different leads to work on this uh, COVID disease. But in this study also, what we found that 50% uh, of patients in the intervention group of RT-PCR negative uh, whereas only 3%, 10% uh, patients were reported RT-PCR negative in seven days in the control group. And most of the cases, however, uh, turned out to be COVID negative uh, in seven to 14 days of uh, range. And 20% uh, cases in control group, they took more than 14 days to be tested RT-PCR negative. However, in uh, uh, interventional group, only 6% patients uh, progress with disease and took more than 14 days for turning out to be uh, either asymptomatic or COVID negative. So it may be concluded that the change in disease status from COVID positive to COVID negative in hospitalized SARS CoV-2 patients was much earlier in the intervention group where add-on Yunani regimen uh, was administered as compared to control group. And in this study, I should also mention that uh, we used Yunani Joshanda of Unab Sapista Bedana and Khamira Marwarit as the uh, main drugs, that uh, as the main Yunani regimen that was administered to patients. And of course, along with other um, adjuvant medicines also which were uh, given for symptomatic purposes uh, like uh, Habbe Mubarak or Habbe Surfa or Habbe Hindi Ziki for uh, patients with breathlessness. And uh, in fact, also sufufetine was used uh, in some cases where diarrhea was uh, complained. So I think the biggest lesson learned is that prevention is better than cure. I should say, and Manchanda sir also mentioned that following a healthy lifestyle and healthy diet regime is the key uh, for uh, the management of such diseases. So the government has also decided to prepare beforehand and uh, as a part of uh, preparedness, or we can say the escalation plan also and equip ourselves in uh, for any possible manner so that we are able to face uh, any type of variant coming or any number of uh, COVID waves that may come in future. So this has also given us the opportunity to work and do researches in uh, alternative system of medicines, uh, especially uh, especially uh, Ayurveda or Yunani system of medicines or homeopathy. And a lot of research in this type of uh, epidemic or communicable diseases can be conducted in future. However, we all pray that uh, we don't face any uh, serious waves of COVID. But in case in future we face uh, some unfortunate circumstances, so 
uh, some more studies may be planned that may be conducted at Tibia College, perhaps. As Sir mentioned, we have a uh, uh, 150 bedded COVID hospital uh, with 100 bed oxygen uh, facility and 50 dedicated ICU beds, plus a 100 uh, bedded makeshift COVID hospital is also ready. So uh, researches can be conducted there. So I request uh, CCRM also that in case in future uh, we face any uh, such hard times, so we can plan out for some researches uh, just as we did uh, previously in the uh, first wave. So with this, I would like to conclude. And if there are any questions or any uh, suggestions, we can take up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Dr. Noman. And I would like to thank uh, Majinda sir for highlighting the active role uh, played by government of India, both at central level and state level, and how you know the and the efforts made uh, by all the IU system, especially Yunani medicine. And uh, it was happening to hear about our colleague. Uh, from Yonani stream mentioned here and the efforts they are doing at uh, their respective level uh, and uh, the efforts they have made and we are sure uh, will be moving ahead as by joining hands and taking more collaborative studies in uh, near future uh, and uh, indeed it has been a robust team effort uh, which has helped us in combating the challenge of COVID-19 pandemic and uh, I have noted uh, down the suggestions given by you sir and we'll be bringing it out in the recommendations. So now I'll uh, go to our respected uh, Vahid sir, our Padma Shiri, uh, he's the moderator of the session to give his uh, Kaguri remark for this particular session. Please sir. Thank you very much. I'm audible. I'm audible. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yeah. Thank you very much for very nice presentation to the uh, respected uh, Dr. Manchanda, Dr. Jugal Kishore, Dr. Nabi, Norman, and Dr. Paraswani. An excellent presentation and thought provoking uh, uh, lectures. Uh, as we all know, that uh, with the emergence of the new variant um, uh, Omicron, we are all at the midst of the crisis like no other. So we have learned the lessons in the past. No project for the future, but based on our experiences, uh, which we had for the last two years, almost last two years during the pandemic, uh, we know that uh, we have to plan for a future, how to tackle this situation. As all of us know, though, know that the pandemic has sent the shockwaves through the global economy. People are worried about their lives and livelihoods. Many businesses are either closed or waiting to customers to return. And there's a lot of compromise with this pending. The World Health Organization and World Health Organization and the World Bank in a joint statement has stated that that the people at large, not only in India but at large in the global population, has, and both economic and saving too, which they have kept for a livelihood and for their future commitments and in certain condition it's not a globe it is not a national crisis but it's a global truly a global crisis so covid 19 virus does not stop at borders so for this reason we need a well coordinated international strategies to fight the virus and its, and its economical impact and are more effective than it's going alone and my dear friends as all of we know that the universal health when we talk about the karlo dunya murti mein isi tarike ke same thing like uh, the United System of Medicine has become reaching to the global population. So uh, when we talk about at the national level, at the universal health level, so these coverages means a fairer and the healthier world for all. For me, for that, we need to focus on health spending and the infrastructure creation for the new challenges and future challenges. So I will let the, the most important thing is to, to tackle the safety of the life life saving is a big concern and improve the quality of life and we were talking about the quality of life through united system of united system of medicine is a great educator of the immunomodulation which was the prime concern during the tackling tackling the covid era where where there was no specific drug was available no specific calls for the treatment was available and there was no vaccine was available 
So the role of immunomodulator well documented in an system of medicine and these drugs were used in order to improve the quality of the life patient by enhancing their immunomodulation and the quality of life through their the, the guidelines given by the United system of medicine that is the six essentials of life. My dear friends, as we know that uh, the, the survivors of the COVID-19 frequently complained of the very cognitive dysfunctions and which has been described as the brain fog. So there is the great need to look into the cognitive impairment and association with this disease, which is well characterized. And that is a lifetime problem to take care of. The United Medicine stands side by side with the morbid population at large to tackle these situations. And the, the most important is the, uh, when we talk about uh, the prevention and the uh, um, uh, prevention uh, of this uh, infection, reinfection among the masses. So United System of Medicine must take the preventive measures through this uh, the uh, the United formulations uh, both the air uh, extend uh, use as a inhalation <laughs> as well as uh, systemic use symptom management but, but there was no covid like symptoms illness was available i mean was separate uh, suffering and add on the intervention in the confirmed cases both at the hospitals and at the mass level so we, uh, i think these uh, has given as the united system of medicine has emerged as a one of the best system to tackle the covid situation at emergency level, so emerge uh, as a, one of the best system in the primary healthcare system in India. So these use us a, a, a good initiative, a platform to to take this to the international level or the global level in collaboration with the various other agencies in order to create more documentation, more publication, and that will and and the propagation of the system at the international agencies. So that will help us in creation the evidence-based data and reaching to the masses and serving the morbid community at large. With these few words, I really uh, appreciate my speaker, our speakers, the panel of speakers, those who are uh, have given in a very thought-provoking talk and enlightened us with their knowledge and their experiences. And I'll take this opportunity to thank the Director, uh, General Center of Health Medicine, my friend, Dr. Asimali Khan, for holding this series of uh, readiness and COVID management and experiences learned, and, and the, the life forward, the planning forward from here to tackle this situation. And I'm out and I'll break at CCRM for holding this seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir, uh, for your birth of wisdom and- uh, Thank you, Dr. Gazala. Yeah, can you hear me? Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, 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 ma'am. Am audible? Yes. yes. yes, yes. Okay. So thank you, sir, for your words of wisdom. And uh, yes, it has been uh, endeavor uh, mm -hmm. in CCRM under the leadership of our director general, uh, Professor Asim Ali Khan, sir, mm -hmm. uh, to have you know proper mm -hmm. planning for doing research. And we are bringing out many publications, and we are documenting and maintaining the data. And uh, we are hopeful that in near future uh, we'll be making uh, you know more progress and striving hard to achieve you know. Uh, some successful outcomes as we are already you know in that mode and we are collaborating also thank you thank you very much and uh, now for the formal vote of thanks we have amongst us shri kk sapraji he is assistant director admin in ccrum so i'll request sapraji to kindly propose formal vote of thanks thanks Gajana, madam uh, thank you for providing me the opportunity to propose the vote of thanks in today's web webinar series. First and foremost, I am thankful to Chief Guest of our web webinar series, Professor Afshar Alam, Honorable Vice Chancellor Jamia Hamdard for gracing that occasion. I am also thankful to Professor Asim Ali Khan, DG CCRM, and Advisor Junani for de delivering his welcome address and his guidance in organizing the web webinar series. I also extend 
thanks to the esteemed speaker, Dr. R.K. Manchanda, Director, Department of Ayush, Government of NCT of Delhi, Dr. Jugal Kishore, Director, Professor and HOD, Community Medicine, Vardhaman Mahavi Medical College and Southern Western New Delhi. And I am also grateful to the moderator, Dr. M. A. Wahid, former director, National Research Institute of Unani Medicine for Skin Diseases, Hyderabad. I would also like to thank the organizing team, especially Dr. Gajala, Javed, ROU, S4, and her team for coordinating the program along with the IT team, social media team, and other associated staff who helped in organizing the webinar series. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Varun. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sapraji, uh, for proposing formal vote of thanks. And we uh, thanks, thank you for all the support you have provided from the admin for organizing this webinar series. So we'll be concluding now, and I'll request all the participants to kindly fill the feedback form, which will be showing up in the window. And tomorrow, we'll have deliberations on role of nutrition in maintaining health. So stay tuned in. See you all tomorrow at the same time at 2.30 PM. Thank you so much. Thanks, Vivian.